Hello everyone, I'm Tamara Banks, and Mitch, it's great to be with you Good again to today. You. Good to see you, Tamara. How are you? I'm great, and Good. Chief, welcome to you. Thank you, Tamara. This sounds like a really uh, exciting program. But before we jump right into what it is, talk a little bit about how the bonding project that funded the Denver Justice Center also funded the Denver Jail. Tell us a little bit about some of those uh, changes. Well, the Denver County Jail was one of the largest catalysts in the Denver Justice Center uh, bond program. The reason that we had to build a new jail downtown is because the Denver County Jail had become antiquated. Uh, the facility was no longer useful for the population that we have, the exploded population that we have for inmates. And so uh, as a part of the Denver Justice Center bond, the Denver County Jail was always a part of the renovation in the criminal justice uh, system for the city of Denver. And at the completion of the opening of the downtown detention center, we had the opportunity to knock down half of the Denver County Jail and put up a brand new building, which we dedicated on October 15th, uh, which is uh, the building 24 on our campus. So you've been uh, able to make better use of those buildings? Absolutely. It's a, uh, a better model. It's a better way to supervise inmates and provides a better working envir environment for our staff and provide some really interesting programming, including the aquaponics, right? Absolutely. The uh, aquaponics program will be in an area just south of Building 24. We do have other programming in Building 24 to include the classes that we had before, uh, GED parenting classes, but we also have a new program, which is recovery in a secure environment in conjunction with the Denver County Court. We actually have a unit that's dedicated to helping inmates that have addictions uh, overcome those addictions while they're in custody. And so that is in the new building that we have on our campus. So let's talk a little bit about what aquaponics is. I didn't really know that there was a term for what you're going to describe until just a few days ago doing research for this topic. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. I didn't know about it until about a year and a half ago. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Aquaponics is actually uh, the comp combination of two biosciences. It's uh, aquaculture, which is growing fish in a contained environment, and hydroponics, which is growing vegetables in a contained environment. And when you combine the two as a bioscience, you get uh, aquaponics. So then are, I take it then some of the fish that are grown there are eaten as, and provide meals for the, the inmates? All of them can be eaten. And uh, the fish can be used as food as well as the vegetables that are grown. Uh, can be used for food also. Aquaponics is done uh, not just locally, um, it's done nationally and even across the world. I know that there is a system uh, that is very productive in South Africa. Um, and so it's done across the world. It's been around probably since um, the days of Jesus. 2,000 years ago, um, aquaponics was being done in different forms. Today, it's making a resurgence because it's a clean way to grow food and we will be the first jail in the nation to have an aquaponics program. So how will the aquaponics, um, like whose idea was it? You said it's been around since, you know, the days of, of Jesus. How did it come to Denver? Uh, Director Wilson and I are auditors for the American Correctional Association. And one of the friends that we have who's also an auditor is a retired sheriff from uh, the Pasco County Sheriff's Department down in Florida. And they do hydroponics. And she began to encourage us to look into cost savings for producing uh, vegetables for our inmate population by doing hydroponics. And so the director and I kind of kicked this thing around for a while. And we heard about aquaponics and began to explore the feasibility of, de fe feasibility of doing that on our campus and found out that we can do it. And so do the inmates actually do the, the work and the upkeep for the, the program? They do. They are supervised by a staff member. Uh, we're projected to have a deputy sheriff who will serve as an agriculturalist as well as a security officer. But the inmates actually are doing uh, the labor inside of the aquaponics system. So how does that help them when they're serving time and they're, they're farming and they're playing in, in the water, as some critics might, might uh, think? Well, I think it helps them in several ways. Uh, the first is um, green industry is uh, something that's growing across the country. 
Um, for an inmate to be able to get a job skill that they can use in the community helps them to not recidivate, which means to come back to jail. So if they're able to get a skill that they can use in the community to get a job, um, that's going to help them and help the taxpayers because that person won't be coming back to jail. As well as learning just uh, some general work habits for folks that may not have those. Um, just getting up every morning and having a responsibility, uh, something that we like to teach the inmates, we call that life skills. And so it helps them in that way. Uh, additionally, in trying to provide better food options uh, for the inmates, trying to uh, make healthier choices, uh, we can also provide them with those while they're in custody. And so there are several things that uh, benefit the inmates while they're uh, as a part of the aquaponics program. And I imagine, Mitch, if they're not going through the process in the judicial system all the time, it kind of frees up the courts to, to work on some other issues. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, I, I think that the reason we wanted to do this show is so our listeners and our viewers would know how important the jail system in the city and county of Denver is and that their investment in that bond initiative to help us build the Justice Center, how important that was because it's allowing the sheriff to do the kind of work that they're doing there. We had a show not too long ago about the sobriety court and now people serve longer sentences in jail for driving under the influence of alcohol if they're a repeat offender. So what we're doing in Denver is we're getting on top of that situation through sobriety court, knowing that they're going to be there longer, they can get and start to get the treatment mm -hmm. that the sheriff's talking about there. And so, you know, we're, we're working together with the sheriffs. And obviously, you know, an update on the new justice system over at the courthouse, on the criminal courthouse is there as well. And that is working very well in conjunction to the building that everybody sees that thinks now that's the county jail really that's the city jail it's a big building it houses a lot more people than the old city jail housed about 300 400 people or at least it was intended to it probably right. housed a few more but uh, now the people that are awaiting trial are housed downtown and they are moved back and forth from the courts to the jail through it through an underground tunnel and those big blue buses that we used to always see throughout the city, at least at this end of town, mm -hmm. we don't see nearly as many of those. And so the system is working and it's working well. And part of uh, having Sheriff Diggins on is to talk about really, I think the cutting edge things that are going on mm -hmm. in our jail that are going on nowhere else in the country. And if it wasn't for his leadership and Sheriff Wilson's leadership, I really don't think these programs would be in place. And we are really utilizing those resources that the people of Denver gave us. And this will save money in the long run. And it's really, it's kind of a cool thing to talk about. Right. I don't think, as Mitch said, <coughs> people realize how much went into that bond initiative and all the build out that, and all the programs that, that come about. When people, after they get out and they've gone through the aquaponics program and they've been involved in it, will they be? Will those be skills that they'll be able to carry on with them if they decide to go into that field and, and do a little bit more outside of jail? Absolutely. We are working with Mayor Hancock's Office of Sustainability. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Tianiao is the Chief Sustainability Officer for the City and County of Denver and he's been involved with the project. And one of his goals is to make sure that when those people leave from our facility that there are opportunities for them to gain those skills and so it's a very comprehensive approach to how we're putting this project together. We have uh, hands across the city who are putting this thing um, into place to make sure that it's uh, holistic and that it's going to be productive and that it is beneficial not just to the inmates but also to the citizens of Denver by being uh, cost savings to our food budget and uh, something that they can be proud to say that uh, they have uh, in their correctional system. How challenging was it to, to get it started and to get people to really buy into this whole idea of a word that they probably had never even heard of? Um, I don't think it was really a challenge. I think that the city of Denver is always on the cutting edge, as Mitch has said, uh, four things, and the Denver Sheriff's Department has always been on the cutting edge of things and bringing new programs to what we do, and I think that uh, this program goes right in line with that. Um, there are some people who have some pretty tough questions for us, but I think we have answered those um, with a straight face. Um, it's going to be a cost savings for us to do this project. There are 
many tangible benefits, um, some that may be intangible, like I said, with the inmates getting the job skills. But I think what most people take from uh, hearing about the project is that it's going to be something that's going to be good for the city of Denver. Dan, and yeah. Let me tell mm -hmm. you, this is a real eye-opener, though, because I was listening to uh, Sheriff Wilson do a presentation. Annually, we have a law enforcement appreciation luncheon where everybody gets up and talks very briefly about uh, the programs that they run in their different, so we have the police chief, the fire chief, Homeland Security. Sheriff Wilson got up and he laid out what they do and all that. Then he put up a slide of fish. And I gotta <laughs> tell you, I looked at the audience, we all looked at the fish and we're like, okay, what do fish have to do with jails? Right. And he laid out, he briefly described what they're doing, and everybody in the audience thought, what a great idea. Yeah. This really, if you think about it, and you mentioned the number of people they house, you have to feed people, and to, to have a new idea, it takes courage to do something like this. Mm -hmm. You know, you can always just do it the way it's always been done, and, you know, never change things. And that's why I wanted to do this show, because I wanted the people to know what it, the sheriffs are doing and the kind of thinking that's going on in the sheriff's department and how important that is to the people of Denver. And a great uh, uh, feather in your cap is that it's a sustainable um, process, that, that you're feeding the people who are uh, being held there for the time being, and then they, those people are helping to build that process. So it's a real cycle that, that kind of works. It, feeds upon itself, for lack of a better term. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about the, the funding. How will it be uh, funded, and has that been a challenge? Um, we have sources or resources which are already dedicated to our food budget every year um, and feeding 2,000 inmates three times a day. Um, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And if we can figure out options to do it cheaper and better, I think that that helps taxpayers, and so we are going to do it inside of our current budget without uh, having to expand that. Is it, is it tough to get the, the um, I, I talked about the support from the outside, but what about support from the inside, the, the inmates? Or do you have p uh, long lines of people waiting to go, yeah, I want to do this, or kind of trying to convince them that this is a, a good thing to do? I think we will have plenty of inmates who will want to be a part of it. Um, one thing that you'll find is that inmates love to do new things. Um, when we started the RISE program, we had a long list of people who wanted to get involved with it. Um, when we started our mental health transition units, which are for people who have access one diagnoses, mm -hmm. um, we had long lines of people uh, who want to get in those units. And so I think that we'll have plenty of people who want to work inside of the program. If you think about it, Tamara, the Denver jail is the largest mental health treatment provider mm -hmm in the state of Colorado. Hmm. And I don't think people really realize that, but for me uh, to, to recognize that, that the burden on our criminal justice system has all these different issues that we've always had in our society, mental health, drug addiction, all of those things. Well, most of those institutions are gone. Right. And the place then it falls to is the criminal justice system not always the best place to handle those kinds of issues. So if you do not have people like the Sheriff's Department that are thinking about new ways to deal with these issues that were never intended to be our issues. You know, mental health should be handled in a mental health facility, not in a jail. Right. But when that facility no longer exists or is no longer strong enough to have the, or funded enough by the state, the federal government, the counties, then it falls to us and we have to deal with it. And we're often criticized about the way that we deal with it. And that's why a show like this is so important, is that somebody can understand that there are people in our system that are thinking about how you deal with these problems. You cast them on us, we have to deal with them. And we're dealing with them in very unique ways and in ways that save money and in ways that change people's lives and hopefully get them out of the criminal justice system. And talk a little bit about, uh, Chief, how, how it actually will work. Will people sign up to, to be trained and, and then become part of the system, or how, how will it all come together? We will uh, find the workers in our current um, inmate labor pool who are dedicated, 
um, who probably have longer sentences because we believe this is going to be one of the job skills that takes a little uh, longer to learn. But inmates who perform well in other jobs will um, sort of graduate into working in aquaponics. And so we will select them from that pool. So this leads to my next question of who actually qualifies. So not everybody can, can be a part of it. You kind of have to earn this privilege, really, to, to be part of the program. Absolutely. All sentenced misdemeanor inmates in uh, the Denver County Jail are required to work by law in order to earn good time. And so all of the inmates uh, that are sentenced have different jobs. They may work in our kitchen. They may work in our laundry. Um, they all have different jobs, and so they do have to sort of qualify to work in this program, and we think that this is going to be one of the uh, more sought-after jobs in uh, that job pool. How long will the training take, and, and who's going to do the actual training? Will it be someone within the, the uh, jail department? It will be. It will be one of our deputy sheriffs. Um, we're going to have a dual-purpose officer. Um, what that means is they will not only just serve as a deputy sheriff for security, but they will also be responsible for the agricultural part of aquaponics. And we currently have staff on hand who have backgrounds in agriculture. In fact, we have two deputies that have been invol involved with the project so far that um, have degrees in agriculture from CSU. Huh. Uh, I had a question. I what is this physically going to look like? Yeah. What is the plant going to look like? I mean, that, that for, to me, I, I've never seen anything like this, so I can't imagine, you know, are the fish in tubes? Are they, I mean, how do you, how does it, what does it look like? They're actually in very large tank, um, tanks, 50,000-gallon um, tanks. So you have approximately eight tanks that uh, sit on the south side of the building, mm -hmm. and from those tanks, Water is pumped out of those tanks, uh, which has uh, nutrient-rich water, which is going to go to the plants. The plants sit in beds, um, and the roots from the plants actually clean the water. Um, the plant beds are soilless, mm -hmm. so it's a, a or excuse me, it's a soilless medium, mm -hmm. which means there's no dirt. They just float in water, and as the water moves through, the roots from the plants clean uh, the water and the water is then returned back to the, back to the fish tanks. And the other question I had is will you ever get into the fish selling business in that you're going to produce more than you eat out there and make these fish available for sale in Denver where I know the Department of Corrections does that currently when you ask where the fish are from and they say somewhere in Colorado and you're like those kind of fish don't grow in Colorado you know that I know they're being grown by inmates in the Department of Corrections program is there a plan to maybe uh, challenge them and sell some of these fish on the market there is a plan for us to do so um, if we have the ability to grow beyond our consumption Mm -hmm. um, we do have plans in the future to not just sell the fish, but also possibly the vegetables. As a part of Mayor Hancock's Denver Seeds program, he wants to give some of these products back to the community also. And so our current plan is to start inside of our campus, which we believe will sustain some of our food um, for our population. But there is an opportunity for us to grow the program. In fact, there's about a two-acre plot across the street from the county jail that we can expand on mm -hmm. and that will then give us the opportunity to do that and so um, we would someday like to challenge our friends down in the Department of Corrections. Um, DOC has one of the largest industries in the country. Um, Colorado Correctional Industries does about 25 million dollars worth of business uh, today mm -hmm. through their inmate industries program and so they do grow tilapia um, which they sell to a local market um, that I won't name, but they do sell it to a local market, and it's some of the best fish that you probably will taste. And you, prob you probably probably have eaten it, Tamara, and I won't tell you where it came. I'll tell you after the show. Well, I, well I've been thinking about all this great sushi that could be right in our <laughs> own backyard. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and it's re we're really talking about a real organic. I mean, let's talk about organic food. That's Absolutely. right here in our in our own backyard. Absolutely. So on that point, how could it actually help the community? We've talked about how it helps the, the inmate population of, of gaining a skill. How will this actually help the community um, beyond just being able to maybe one day buy some fresh fish from, from the inmates who grow this fish and plants? Well, it helps the community because 
the inmates are the community. Mm -hmm. um, most of the folks that are in our custody are in uh, there for misdemeanor crimes. 97% of the people that come into jail are coming back to the community. And so giving them the skills and ability to not return while they're uh, in jail is something that I believe benefits the community. Um, while they're there, they learn those job skills and uh, I think it just is beneficial for everyone, including um, the community that, that we serve. And I think, uh, I'm curious how many um, inmates can be aquaponic, are they farmers? Is that what, what they're called? Or aquaponic guides? <laughs> I, I don't know if we've coined a term yet. I don't know if there is one. I'll have to check with the, the aquaponic community to see yeah. what, they, what they like to call themselves. But how many folks do you think we will, you, can you hold at one time to be able to, to work on this? There will be about 10 inmates that work on the project at one time. Mm -hmm. And we generally have about 50 inmates that work in our kitchen at one time, about 15 inmates that work in our laundry. So it, it will be um, at about the same number that we have for other jobs inside of our facility. One of the things I think about when I envision this process going through is um, the things that happen around this project of building community mm -hmm. within uh, the, the inmate population in a, in a positive sense, that being able to rely on each other for the various jobs that, that um, go into the aquaponics program. I imagine that that would be a goal, if it's not a direct goal, it's just something that kind of comes out of something like this, teaching team, teamwork maybe. Absolutely, and gaining social skills and being around other people who are working and learning the importance of uh, give and take in the job environment or the work environment is uh, additionally a skill that those inmates will learn as a part of this program. In, in the minute or so that we have left, Chief, I'm just curious your final thoughts on, on how you sell this idea to people who might be skeptical about this happening uh, with inmates that are supposed to be serving hard time. Well, I would like to say that um, when someone is arrested and they are sent to jail and they're convicted, uh, their punishment is the loss of their freedom. These folks are coming back to the community and our job is not to punish them further. Our job is to help them to um, gain the skills necessary to be successful when they return back to society. And this goes in line with that. All of the things that the Sheriff's Department has been doing over the past few years um, has been geared towards that goal and so this program is right in line with that. Just always say you want them working. You want them producing their own food mm -hmm. so you don't have to spend so much of your hard-earned tax dollars to house them or do you want them just sitting there watching TV. And on, we have a great sheriff's department that is willing to go out on a limb like this and we've been partners with them on some great programs that have had fantastic success. I wish them well on this and I'm glad that uh, you were willing to come on the show and talk about it. Thanks, yeah. Thanks. Well, thanks Chief for being here. Thank you to Chief Elias Diggins with the Denver Sheriff's Department for being our guest on this edition of Dialogue Denver DA. We'll see you next time. Denver 8 TV, your city, your source.